All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to prove a very beautiful identity in analysis, namely that the supremum of the sum of two sets is the same as the sum of the supremum of two sets. So what do I mean by that? First of all, what's the definition of A plus B? Literally all you do, you just add elements of A with elements of B. So it's sets of the form A plus B, sorry, it's numbers of the form A plus B where A is in A and B is in B. So for instance, you can show that if A is the interval uh, 1 comma 2 and B is the interval, very clever, 3 comma 4, so again this is 1, 2, and this is, let's say, 3, 4. If you add all the elements in A with all the elements in B, that's A and that's B, you should, I believe, just get the interval of 4, 6. In other words, if you shift this interval by 1, 2, you should get the interval of 4, 6. And notice there's a beautiful relationship between the supremum of this set with the supremum of that set. Notice if you add the supremum of A with the supremum of B, you actually get the supremum of A plus B. And it turns out that's always true. And the question is, how do we show this? Well, a nice thing in analysis is, if you want to show two things are equal, you just show that this is less than or equal to this, and then this is less than or equal to this. So let's first show the easy part, which is as follows. So let's show, first of all, that the suprema of A plus B is less than or equal to the supremum of A plus the supremum of B. But that's not very hard because suppose you have an arbitrary element in A plus B, then it's of the form, so let A plus B in A plus B be arbitrary. But then what do we know about A and B? Remember, soup of A, it's kind of the maximum of A. So in particular, for any element of A, for sure we know A is less than or equal to the supremum of A. So, so by definition, of supremum of A, we have that A is less than or equal to the supremum of A. Again, because the supremum is the least upper bound. In particular, it's an upper bound. And similarly, by definition of supremum of B, we have B is less than or equal to the supremum of B. And then adding both together, we get A plus B, it's less than or equal to supremum of A plus supremum of B. But what is this saying? It means for any arbitrary element in A plus B, that element is less than or equal to the supremum of A plus the supremum of B. So in other words, what this is saying, so again, this is an arbitrary element in A plus B. What this is saying is that the, that number, supremum of A plus supremum of B, it's an upper bound for A plus B. And in particular, by definition of least upper bound, the maximum, if you want, of this set has to be smaller than that upper bound. So, in other words, then by definition, of supremum of A plus B, we get that the biggest, you know, the biggest thing, you know, not maximum, but sort of the uh, biggest sort of maximum of this set 
has to be less than or equal to the sum of those two numbers. Ta-da! And so that was the, the easy side, and now what we want to show is the harder side. Mm -hmm. right. So we, let's start on a new whiteboard. So let's show the other way. A suprema of A plus supremum of B is less than or equal to the suprema of A plus B. So how do we want to do this? Well, let A, let's say A be arbitrary. So again, very important, we're fixing A and then we're fixing B. Then, for all B and B, we get that, uh, consider again the element A plus B. Well, that's by definition, again, A plus B is an A plus B. So by definition of supremum of A plus B, we know this element is smaller than that. But then what do we get? We get that mm, A is less than or equal to the supremum of A plus B minus B. But again, what do we have? We know that A is arbitrary. That's an arbitrary element of A, and therefore this fixed number is an upper bound for A. So since since A is arbitrary, What do we get? Suprema of A plus B minus B is an upper bound for A. For A. So by definition of least upper bound, the supremum of A has to be less than or equal to the supremum of A plus B minus B. But then what do we get? Put B on the other side, then B is less than or equal to the supremum of A plus B minus supremum of A. But now it's kind of beautiful. Because B is arbitrary, we then get that this is a, an upper bound for B. So supremum of A plus B minus supremum of A is an upper bound uh, for B. So in particular, the supremum of B is less than or equal to the supremum of A plus B minus the supremum of A. And therefore, what we get is the sum of the two so then, just solving for this, we get supremum of A plus supremum of B is less than or equal to the supremum of A plus B. How nice is that? So combining the two things, we do get equality. The question is, how do you get the version with infimum? Well, the beautiful thing is, it's just by this beautiful equality, identity relating infimum and supremum. So it is also true that infimum of A plus infimum of B is the infimum of A plus B. And why? Because the infimum of A plus B, by definition, it's minus the supremum of minus A plus B. But it turns out that minus A plus B, it's minus A plus minus B. This is, I mean, it's obvious, but it's something you do have to show, and that's because any element in minus A plus B is of the form minus 
a plus b, which is equal to minus a plus minus b. And you see this by definition is in minus a, and this by definition is in minus b, and vice versa. Therefore, this element in minus a plus b is actually the sum of two elements, one in minus a and the other one in minus b. Okay, good. But now you can just use the identity we've just shown. So this is supremum of minus a plus supremum of minus b. And here then you're just distributing two numbers. So minus supremum of minus a plus minus supremum of minus b. And that's just inf of a plus inf of b. And there we go. It's quite beautiful. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.